When it comes round to that point where a school wants to create its next strategy, its next objective of where it's going, very often the information that we gather for that is really rather weak. We might have a parental questionnaire, we might have focus groups with students, teachers and maybe some of the wider community, but that information is not as deep as it could be. The agenda is often set by the person setting the questions and in focus groups, quieter members of the community, those who maybe just want more time to think, often find that their views fall to the bottom or in fact their views aren't even taken at all. So at NOTOSH we've been applying our immersion in design thinking that we've used in projects in industry, in the creative industries and for learning in school and we've started to apply it to the strategy itself in our strategy garages. These are interesting because the immersion doesn't last a long time, it's maybe three or four weeks at most, but some of the key activities that are undertaken in that time lead to a far richer data set and as a result leadership teams, design teams are able to create a far more exciting strategy that really comes from the students, parents and teachers of that learning community. Here are some of the strategies that we suggest a design team uses during that period of immersion. First of all, the design team needs to be mixed. We need to have students from elementary, middle and high school. We need to have teachers from those same areas, maybe a member or two of the leadership team, certainly a parent or two as well. You try and keep the design team itself down to around a dozen people so that it's a team, so it's manageable, so the team can communicate with each other a few weeks further down the line. Each member of the team is responsible for going out and about and trying to scout those observations and those opinions of the people with whom they are connected. Some of the things people might try initially are simply talking to people, interviews. Interviews themselves um, have some, some advice that you can put around them. A good interview is hard to pull off, but some simple ideas to help might include, very simply, asking questions which are open and which encourage the person you're talking to to talk in practical, pragmatic terms. Tell me a story about the last time when you were trying to achieve this. Tell me what it was like when you saw this. Um, why did that person over there disagree with what you thought was a good idea? And opening up these personal stories helps you understand some of the bigger issues at heart later on. So asking open questions, asking people to remember actual stories of what happened rather than talking in generalities. Also, asking why things are the way they are is really curious. Getting your Socratic why ready, but then asking that why five times. Five whys is a great technique to really plumb the depths of the perceived problem and discover what the real underlying problem is. And in some cases, it takes something that someone thought was a problem and shows that actually it was based on a lot of pre-held assumptions. And so gathering those assumptions, as well as what people um, believe to be the truth, is really important. We can use them later on. So interviews are vital. The second idea is that everyone in the design team, everyone in a school community even, could be encouraged for a period of time to gather their ideas in an ideas wallet. This period is not about creating new ideas, because we've not really found the problem that we're trying to solve yet. This period is more about trying to, um, you know, if you have an idea, sure, keep it somewhere. So an ideas wallet is a place to, to keep it. More interesting at this stage is really finding the problems, finding the bugs. And so a, a top idea is that people, in addition to their ideas wallet, where they can store away those ideas for later, that they keep a bug list. And a bug list is that sheet of paper or small notebook where you write down all those little things that don't quite work the way they should. Gathering them together in one place means that you can access them later and in some of those small problems might lie some bigger problems. Maybe if we ask why that problem's there five times we discover what the root cause is and we could then develop some strategy around resolving that. Taking photographs of what you see is great. Think about taking them like a forensic officer might. So if you enter a room um, a classroom, for example, you're going to enter lots of classrooms. So why not take the photographs from the same place each time you go in, or from the same places? If you take a photograph from each corner of the room, then you might notice something that later that you didn't know, notice at the time when you were taking the picture. Photographs are great, but a sketch can be even more powerful. 
So if you do spot something when you're observing a scene in a school cafeteria, in a leadership corridor, um, in a meeting, in a classroom, sketching what you think is important editorializes it. It helped people understand later what it was you thought was important at that time. So consider sketching, even if it's just very simple sketch people, um, it helps people understand the issue. You can always write a little caption that helps people understand the context. Uh, the penultimate idea is encourage people to share provocative alternative ways of doing things that come from other schools perhaps, but even under other industries. So if people are reading magazines like Fast Company, the Harvard Business Review, Wired magazine, or if they're reading the technology supplements of a newspaper or the science pages, maybe they've got a favourite website they like to go to which shows alternative ways that schools are going about their learning, ask them to to print those out, at least print out the headlines, maybe the key image from the article, print out the first page. What we want to do is gather what are often digital artifacts, these alternative stories, and make them physical so that we can put them alongside the sketches, the post-it notes from the interviews, people's post-it note remarks, um, photographs that people have printed out. We can put those all together in what we call the war room or the design room, and that's what will help us make decisions later about how we cluster things, what are important problems, which problems really only have one or two pieces of evidence that make them important. And the final thing is, keep it analogue. As Marilyn Monroe put it, think in ink. So even if what you've discovered is digital, even if you use a, a digital camera to record an interview, make sure that you transcribe the key points, highlight key quotes by writing them out by hand or at least printing something out. Later on, when you bring these artefacts together into a physical space, we want to be able to move them, uh, cluster them up, organise them in different ways. And it's really hard to do that digitally because our screens are just too small. We're going to put this on a large wall over a large space with at least 12 people around that wall trying to take in all that information. So we're going to make all of our artefacts physical. Uh, by the time we bring them all together. I hope that those four or five ideas for your immersion help you undertake something that is fun and exciting for you, that is revelatory, that creates new insights, and it will probably affirm that a lot of what you're doing already is incredibly good, as well as highlighting those areas where a strategy might help pull some threads together and uh, make a better job of those bugs that you've found. You can find out more ideas on how to gather this information on the Notosh Lab. Just go to notosh.com forward slash lab and you'll find ideas on immersion, on gathering evidence and on coming up with great ideas on the back of that.